Thank you, everybody, for being here today. Uh, you know that over the weekend, we had a bipartisan delegation. Actually, it's more tripartisan because <laughs> we did have an independent with us as well. But um, what we did, we demonstrated the U.S.'s unwavering support for the freedom-loving freedom people of Ukraine, and we affirmed strength uh, of NATO. Um, so we departed this last week with the conviction that America, Ukraine, and the free world have, and ha we have the will and we have the means to unite and stand up to Vladimir Putin. So while we were in Poland, we heard directly from Ukrainian civil society leaders um, this group of passionate, strong women delivered a clear message to the United States. And that message was, we need more lethal aid, and we need it as soon as possible. They are very rightly concerned about the pace and the flow of the lethal aid into Ukraine. We also met with non-governmental organizations, and we met with Ukrainian refugees, including one woman who left her husband behind to fight against the Russians. She ultimately wants peace and to be able to return home to her community and her home. The message from all of the Ukrainians we engaged with was that Ukraine will fight to the very last man. They can and they will win this war. Beyond Ukraine's borders, the trip clarified NATO's posture against Putin's unjust and bloody war of aggression. We are united, and it was abundantly clear that if Putin chooses to wage war against a NATO ally, he will rue the day. There will be swift payback. After discussions with U.S. commanders on the ground in Germany and in Poland, I'm confident that the American military is primed at the tip of the spear to deter further aggression and keep Americans safe if we are called upon. So going forward, America's commitment to Ukraine and to our NATO allies must always endure. America cannot be pushed around, and we cannot hold back, especially at this critical time. The U.S. should help facilitate the transfer of the Polish MiG fighter jets and follow on by quickly backfilling with our own F-16s. We must continue the flow of lethal aid, but it must be at a faster pace. Part of the solution is drawing down on the pre-positioned military equipment that we already have staged in that command theater. And finally, is the consensus of America and our NATO allies that Putin must be held accountable for his war crimes. Everything that he has committed, he must be held accountable for. But it will be after Ukraine wins this war. We have seen bombed schools. We have seen bombed hospitals. And we have seen innocent men, win, women, and children killed. Authoritarian, authoritarianism cannot and it simply will not prevail. Defending freedom in Ukraine is defending freedom everywhere. This is a critical time for all of us, not just the Ukrainian people that we encountered and visited, but certainly for all of Europe, all of our NATO allies, and it certainly means the freedom right here in our homeland as well. I will be followed by Senator Gillibrand.